back. Ho, 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 ho. Chit, chit. Huh. Huh. Be we're, ready. Action ready. We're chopping. That's what we are. We're, we're ready. Fight. I don't know why we're fighting. Fighting BGG, as always. I guess that's true, yeah. The never-ending war of opinions. <laughs> Do I get to be an Avenger? Yeah. yeah, I think we're the good guys, right? I think so. We're the villain, but they're <laughs> no, 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 we can't make them the villain. They're like also a, can't make the people. The they're villain. an anti-hero. Yeah, the um, they, they're defenders of the night. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Right. Anyway, uh, what's up, everybody? I'm Mike. <laughs> I'm Nick. <laughs> I'm Steph. And we are uh, we have banded together as the three amigos once again. And what we're doing is we're doing a top ten, but we do a top ten with a twist here. Yeah. Where we come up with a top ten based off of a, uh, a a gaming topic. It can be a mechanism, could be a theme. Publisher we've done or anything. Publishers. Yeah. We've done different years or eras of board gaming. And then what we like to do is curate a top ten between us, and then we see what are the most highly ranked games on Board Game Geek that fit in that same category, yeah. and do our opinions. Well, line up with the opinions of, of the masses because you can rate your games that you enjoy on Board Game Geek and it will affect the ranking of everything. Yeah. So it's sort of our taste versus the people's. Yeah. And so today we're going to do um, IP paste, IP paste, IP based <laughs> games. These are games based on an intellectual property like Star Wars or something like that. Something and this is something for. that I feel like has kind of changed in the hobby because it used to be any kind of like IP based game was like a mass market game that was really bad. Like a themed Monopoly. And now they kind of come around. And so like Steph, how how much does like an IP that you really like mean to you? Like is it kind of like, oh that's cool, that's an IP I like, or is it like, oh I'm really interested in this seek game seek out now. a game for an IP? Um, so I think what's great is that IPs are definitely, they kind of have a bad rap, but I think as we move into more gaming and people are finding games based on IPs, the games are getting better and better and better. And I think yes. that's really, really a great thing. Yeah, yeah I agree. Even with like that. we were talking about, like, even like games that are still pretty mass market, like the Bob Ross Art of Chill, Keeping It Sexy <laughs> by Kenny G. Like, even those are like, better games. They're at least decent. Yeah. Yeah. You they're know what playable, I mean? fun experiences where back in the day it might have been just absolutely just trash. something that you couldn't really get into. So yeah, the, the whole level has raised up and I think we're gonna see that continue even yeah. still, which is like super exciting because Something if it's a if it's a movie you love or a book series or something that could be a great end to a game and then when you get to that game you have something that you also enjoy which might then bring you into the hobby which is very yeah. cool. Uh, so we're going to talk about games that are based on intellectual properties uh, and see what what games do we like versus yeah. what games do the people like mm. based on those IPs. All right, let's get into it. Yeah. All right, BG, your number 10 is number 114 overall. So we're already starting off. Really we're high. starting off. Yeah, yeah we're, we're starting off <laughs> real high. And this is Legendary Encounters um, in Alien Deck Building Games. So this is um, the Legendary System, but it's Legendary Encounters. Because there's like Marvel Legendary, which is different than this slightly. They're, they're yeah, right. a little bit different. And this is the Alien one. And we've never played this one, but we have kind of heard the consensus this is the best one. Would you agree, Steph? Yeah, I mean, I have played it. It adds a, a few extra mechanics to make it a little more challenging slash different than the Marvel one. And I've actually played the Firefly one, which I think I personally prefer, mostly because of the theme. I'm not really into the alien thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. We're, we're same. Like, I like aliens just fine, but uh, it's not been something I've sought out. But uh, I've heard, yeah, mechanically, the things that this mm -hmm. version of Legendary brings is kind of the tops. Uh, I would probably be more inclined, like you, Steph, to go with like the Firefly, just yeah. because with any of these legendary games or IP games in general, you're there Partially. potentially to see these characters yeah, you like and doing least. stuff with these characters. So I would be more into a Firefly theme because I am more connected yeah. to those characters. But right. that's number ten is is Aliens. Aliens is obviously super popular oh, no, there's <laughs> and like deservedly. Well, there's like an Aliens one, a Double Seven one, a Buffy one, a Buffy, Buffy one. Buffy. I mean, they, they've Firefly. created a whole series around this. Yeah, mechanic. there's a whole bunch of. This <laughs> An IP for everyone, I guess, at this point for the encounter. <laughs> Big Trouble yeah. in China. That was that's like oh yeah, that's right. yeah. 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 There's all sorts wow. of stuff out there, and then Marvel, which just covers like hundreds of different characters. Just so so many. Oh there's my a gosh. lot to explore with Marvel Legendary or or whatever Legendary. You're gonna find something you enjoy. But yeah. number ten is Aliens at one fourteen. Nice. So let's go ahead and jump into our number ten. Our number 10 at 971 is The Reckoners. Now guys, I know you guys love this one. I still haven't played it yet, so I need to get oh, on that. 
It's, it's a fun. cool game. Even if you don't like The Reckoners, because we played it for the first time. Actually, I think I played it twice before we had read The Reckoners. Yes. And you just recently read The Reckoners. Yes. And so it was one thing that we enjoyed. This is what the one thing that's kind of nice with any IP-based game. You hope that's good enough that even if you don't know it's still good. what it's based on, it's a solid game. And this is a great um, kind of dice-chucking game, kind of Yahtzee-ish in a way. Yeah. Uh, and this is, I think, with a game that first introduced me, like game trays, like the yeah. like everything oh, that these yeah, dice yeah. slot in <laughs> to different places. The production like, value is pretty great. Yeah. Production value is fantastic. And in this game, you are you're rolling these dice out to get different faces, and you are kind of like in the Reckoners books. There's these epics. There's superheroes gone bad. Every superhero is is super evil, super evil, uh, very dangerous. It's kind of the anti uh, Superman. In yeah. fact, uh, Steelheart. <laughs> Is who you're fighting, and that is he like legit, Superman is gone bad. Yeah. Uh, and so you are trying to research epics because you have to find their weakness. And in the game, you're trying to research epics, and then there's also um, kind of like henchmen, like lesser levels uh, yeah, epics that go to epics, different locations. Yeah. You have to kind of roll out and place them. Uh, Marvel United that just came out kind of reminds me of this, where there's sort of like locations you go to, although mm. that's based on cards. Um, but so it was a really fun game. Really and then fun. now that I've read the books, I'm like was looking through kind of pictures on Board Game Geek, and I was like, oh, these are all the characters. Oh, that's so cool. Now I yeah. know what all this means. Because the, the world is really, really cool. <laughs> yeah. The Reckoners is a great book by Brandon Sanderson, um, and it's they're really, really cool. Yeah, and the game is really solid on top of that. Yeah. And again, we played it before we even read The Reckoners. So I'd love to play it again Still now. really <laughs> liked it, yeah. And so it's like, it's just gone up now because now I really, really like the source material. Yeah, so that's, so, yeah. that's our number 10. Reckoners, just try it out, stuff. I think you'll like uh, the kind of the rolling the dice and moving things around. It's a good time. Yeah. Nice. Um, should we get into number nine? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. So number ten was one fourteen on BG. Number nine. Number nine is one thirteen oh, on BG. Right. Oh my god! And this is Star Wars X Wing. Is your number right. Just nine? Climbing one at a time. So this is Star Wars. Star Wars is obviously a very popular IP. There is Star Wars X Wing. The Star Wars Armada. These are the ones where it's kind of like a. I don't really know much about X Wing Armada because it's never been a game I have much interest in. Mm -hmm. But I know it's like you have ships and your ships have like stats and there's a big old board and you're like. Flying around, yeah, and flying it's a big X wings game around kind of and thing. doing, yeah, kind of like those those minis where you get really into like how you're tacking There's around like cones and, of how you're shooting and stuff. You know, it's just like yeah. it's. Have you ever played X wing or Armada or any of those kinds of games, Steph, or have any interest in them? Um, I haven't played them. It's not exactly. I'm not really into the movement slash fighting kind of games like that. But um, it does look cool. I mean, I've seen it being played. I think they use like these little like almost like rulers to kind of put one plant you know one place to another place they kind of like yeah. manipulate yeah. it using these little like turny things I, I really have no idea but i've seen it i just haven't looked into it very much <laughs> yeah yeah i'm kind of saying it looks cool i mean i love all the ships they're all cool they're all in like flight stands so like a, obviously got great table presence oh, and stuff like sure. that and this is a game that people this is like one of the, this is a lifestyle game. it's a collection yeah, yeah it's, it's like this thing. is a game you play x-wing you spend a lot of money on x-wing you know it's just it, they've fantasy five supported it very well oh, yeah. and it's star wars so it's like well, people yeah. love it it's super course. cool. You get to live out those space, those epic space battles you see in the movies and stuff. So it seems neat, but I, I, I need to find someone who owns it and to, to yeah. let me play with their stuff because yeah. I can't afford it myself. Yeah, exactly. But uh, <laughs> uh, it's very well liked. That's why it's number nine on Board Game Geek, all the way up at 113 over all the games. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so let's get into our number nine. Our number nine comes in at 6,874 called <laughs> Warehouse 13, the board game. <laughs> All right, so a little bit lower in the overall rankings. Yeah. This is not as low as Warehouse 14. It's like know, that, like 50,000, you know, so thank, <laughs> thank God for that. So tell us about Warehouse 13 stuff. Well, so one, I love the show. But to be fair, I've played with somebody who's never seen the show that went and wanted to watch the show after they played it. So that Ooh, means that the theme comes sign. through really, really well, right? So yeah, um, awesome. I love the theme just because, like, there are these fun, like, kind of goofy characters going around trying to stop these artifacts that are coming to life. All these artifacts that, you know, like you might find in, you know, King Tut's tomb or something that comes to life that brings out this horrible thing that's going on. So they're going around the world trying to find these artifacts and secure them before the bad guys can. So one person in the game is a hidden traitor. Um, and you don't know who it is. So who do you trust? Who's trying to manipulate their dice to not help you figure it out? So um, it... it Fans of uh, Battlestar Galactica will in probably enjoy this one because it has a similar feeling. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I think it's a really cool dice game that you're trying to like. 
work as a team. I don't think I could be a traitor just because I am not good at lying. <laughs> but apparently you can just reveal yourself as a traitor and then go on go on from there on out. So I haven't tried it because I haven't oh. I've been lucky not to be a traitor. <laughs> So you could be that a villain is. out in the open and it's sort of like a try to stop me. That's yeah, kind of and so they That's get once you reveal yourself, you get these whole new cards and objectives to stop people. So oh. you so there there is a reason to do it, but there's also a reason to stay hidden for as long as possible, try and betray the missions as as you go secretly. <laughs> I like that. I really I like, like when that. like you getting revealed isn't the end of things, it just changes things. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the fact that you get like this new this that's kind of cool. uh, new way to play is really that's interesting. Rad. So that's yes. very cool. So that's Warehouse 13. The board game. Uh, I the love the idea game. of like Outer Facts coming to life and stuff. So uh, <laughs> that's got me intrigued to watch the show as well because it just does seem. I think you guys fun. would totally love it for what it's worth. Okay, cool. Well, well, that's that's a con. Let's play it. That sounds great. All right, yeah. love that. So that's number nine from us. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number eight. So BGG's number eight, your number eight has climbed the ranks very quickly. Yes. It is 105, almost top 100. I think it definitely will be in the top 100. Yes. And that is Dune Imperium. Boom. Now, I haven't played Dune Imperium. Uh, you two have, Mike. You, I know you've played it. I have, and I quite liked it. Oh. Uh, I thought it was quite interesting. I don't know like the Dune series. In term, I've never read the books and stuff. I know of it, and I know worms. Generally, what's going on in the worms and the it's <laughs> tremors is all it the is. different types of factions yeah. and things like that. And so uh, this one is based kind of off the movies, the newest movie that's coming out. Um, uh, the art style and the actors and stuff based on that. And um, I felt like it seemed Dune-ish. You know, with the kind of confrontations and things. What did you think, Steph, when you played? All right. So for me, it didn't work. Um, I, okay. I, I had high expectations because it was getting such crazy great press from everybody. So maybe I went yeah. in with, with a little bit of high expectations. But for me, it was a slow deck builder and a slow ramp up to the very end. And just it just felt... Because it is a race, right? So you're trying yeah. to get those points any way you can. And, um, yeah, it just, it, for me, it didn't work. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I got lucky and played games that were on the quicker side. Um, it's not that the game was long. It's like, it, it's like, I'm trying to deck build my deck, but you don't really get to use the cards that you're building into your deck. And it's, yeah. and you're trying to like get points here and there. And if you just can't do it or you, your hand never works out the way it needs to, and then it's just like everybody, I was sitting at nine points for four turns. Like it was yeah, like, that's... I couldn't do anything. So I'm like, yeah, that's tough. it was, it <laughs> yeah. was more of a frustration for me. And it's like, well, all right. That's fair. That's so, very fair. Yeah. I, that, that, I mean, I, that I get works. why people like it, I guess, but it just, it didn't work for me. Fair enough. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. And hey, and I've enjoyed my plays and stuff, but I, I feel what you're saying and I get that. I was like, I had won, then somebody else like had a sneaky thing and they beat me and I was just like, that's doing for you. You know, like it felt thematic <laughs> for whatever reason, but maybe I got lucky. Oh yeah, so I don't know uh, anything about the this theme at all. So Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I, so I don't that's know how it relates. Though. Yeah. yeah, I don't know, but uh, not enough Kevin Bacon. I'm just gonna say. Oh, I'm okay, say that's more. probably. If you have right. giant worms, you need Kevin. It's not Bacon. enough Kevin Bacon. That's the rules. That's yeah. the rules. Make Tremors the board. Reba, where's kind of Reba? I know she needs to be up there. Uh, Dune and Tremors are the same movie. Fight me in the comments. Oh. <laughs> go ahead, go for that. Uh, Dune Imperium is 105 overall, though number eight from Board Game Geek. So yeah. in the meantime, while you type that comment, we'll get into number eight. <laughs> Our number eight comes in at fourteen fifty overall. Called Kingdom Rush. Ooh. Oh yeah, Kingdom Rush. So this is this is a game. This is, we were kind of talking about this beforehand. I feel like there are so many games based off video games nowadays. Yeah, That's true. and a lot of them kind of like. I you know, kind of like IP games talking about how they've gotten better now. Now, like if a game has an IP on it, it doesn't automatically mean that it's bad. Kind of like it used to be back in the sure. day. <laughs> and this is kind of like board games based on video games. I feel like they've just been getting better and better and better and better. Finding ways to represent the what you're doing in the video game yeah. in a board game setting. And yeah. Kingdom Rush is like that. Kingdom Rush is actually like an app game. It's like a mobile game yeah. that they made into this big kick, this uh, big Kickstarter and this really kind of fun interesting game where it's kind of like a it's a tower defense game essentially yeah and you have all these like baddies on these cards that are coming through like your kingdom kind of marching through this They're path rushing right? your kingdom um per se and right, then baby. you everyone has this, uh, a character and special abilities and different kinds of attacks that you can do and then throughout the game you're getting better versions of those attacks and you are essentially setting yourself al basically along the path that they're going and you're trying to eliminate these enemies making it a shooting gallery 
yeah, he says you're making a shooting gallery, but all the all the hits that you do are in like polyominal tile shapes. So and like this card has a whole bunch of different spots on it, and you have to cover up all those spots, and that's how you destroy that monster. And so it's this puzzle of trying to figure out where to place yourself because sometimes you can rotate the tile, sometimes you can't and trying to like upgrade and you pass cards back and forth and when you pass them, they get to upgrade. So you're like trying to not use everything so that you can pass it to your partners so that they can upgrade them and then use a stronger version and then maybe they can pass it back to you, make it even better. And it's really, really it's a fun. It's really satisfying kind of polyomino puzzle that you're working on together. So it's very, uh, feels satisfying and it's teamwork and everything. Yeah. And, and one that like, I played the app game and it's very fun. You create your little towers. Does it represent the app? I haven't played the app. It does, fair, it does so. a very good job of that. Cause you're putting these, these towers out and then you're upgrading them in the game. But this one almost goes a little next level because you're playing a board game and things aren't just automatically moving. You get to introduce the idea of the, the spatial puzzle of yeah. everything and how you cover up uh, the cards uh, with all the minions and things. And so that is something that I'm like, this is quite interesting. Yeah. I was very surprised at like how challenging it was. Yes, it's and then also how, very hard. And then the way it ramps you up um, missions wise, you get access to special powers, which is how the app works. So it does a really good job of kind of mirroring the trajectory of that, which is really cool. I think it's, I think it's a, like you said, a very challenging cooperative game. So what I learned yesterday was that Lucky Duck Games, actually the founder Vince, he, he took over a bunch of people from his previous company, but they were all video game people. So they, oh. they worked in the video game industry. So it makes sense that they would create something like Kingdom Rush um, huh. because they have so much experience bringing that over. And that's why they do like Chronicles of Crime and stuff with the digital implementation. Yeah, so I'm yeah, like, it makes oh, that's sense. really cool. And that it was really nice to hear, uh, you know, a little bit of background there. So it makes total sense for Kingdom Hearts. I Rush. think that's super that fascinating. Super and they would cool. know how to, to make it represent, you know, like a video game because they know kind of both sides of the design. That's super fascinating. I did not know that, but it makes total sense. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's super cool, yeah. Yeah, you should definitely that check makes it, out. it that makes it even cooler. And that also makes sense for basically everything Lucky Duck does. Now, yeah. Like sure. you were saying. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So we all agree. Uh, Kingdom Rush is really fun. Cool. For us, it, yeah. was all, it kind of is surprisingly fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was a little surprised by it. Yeah. yeah. So that's super cool. So that's uh, our number eight. Mm -hmm. And we'll go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number seven. So now we're in the top 100. People love IP-based games, apparently. Oh, they do. Because your uh, your number seven is Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth, which is 88 yes. overall. Now, we like this game, too. Ooh, yeah. So Possibly. this is a great game that we might be talking <laughs> about later. Spoiler alert. So, Steph, give us one sentence on this game. <laughs> this, this What's the one-sentence pitch for this game? Ooh. Mm. I... If you if you don't put any commas, you the problem is we're all world uh, talkers. A so. big Middle Earth adventure. If you love Aragon, <laughs> yeah, boom. There boom. you go. There you I go. Know. That's all you get. Uh, no, but you're right. It is it is a big adventure, and and you're cruising through Middle Earth, and this uh, is based off of uh, Mansions of Madness, correct? The, the system, yeah. The system. So it uses an app to kind of generate the world around you, generate uh, your encounters. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, way the maps all lay out. It's super it cool. It tracks your enemies. It does. It does a beautiful job. So you kind of are in the adventuring and storytelling, and it takes you through all these, yeah, these cool adventures using really your favorite cool. characters. We'll talk more about we'll talk it. A little more about but it. Steph left us a little. I mean, we then... know that you guys love Lord of the Rings just because you like you <sighs> named your dogs. It's the best. My dogs are named after Merry and Pippin, too, of the Hobbits, for <laughs> yeah, sure. For sure. Because uh, they're great. Uh, so, yeah, we're fans. It's safe to say. Yeah, it's <laughs> safe to say a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so we'll come back around to that in a little bit. But for now, number uh, seven for you, the folks at Board Game Geek, number 88 overall is Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. That's right. <laughs> it's really good. It's real good. We'll get into our number seven. Our number seven is 1810 overall called Carcassonne Star Wars. Ooh. <laughs> Carcassonne Star Wars. So how do you a, build a road in space? What an odd com combination of words. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, Steph, tell us uh, about yeah, this one. How does it work? I don't really know how their, their roads are like paths that, that, you, that are in space. And then you're forming space like highway. these, you know, planets and stuff. So those are like oh, the... Okay. The churches or the monasteries or whatever the planets and oh. stuff. So, um, and then you're creating like these like astro fields, which are like the cities kind of thing. Um, so I'm I'm not like 
huge on a theme or whatever, but the mechanics in it are super fun. I love Carcassonne anyway, and this might be my favorite of all of them because Ooh. I've played them all. I love a lot of them. Um, wow. But this That's one in, uh, introduces dice. <laughs> What? There, there are ask, Star Wars thing? battles <laughs> that you're going to have uh, where you can battle awesome. for the territory. So, like, normally you can't add a piece to a city, right? You can't add your own guy to a city, right. like, if somebody's already mm-hmm. controlling it. Not here. Here you can add a piece, and then you have to battle for who's, who's oh, taking over. I love it. I'm all in. I mean, that that, that makes sense. That you're sense. battling over Alderaan or something. Uh, yeah. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, okay. so the planets, you can battle over roads. The, the, the roads, you can battle over the, the monasteries. You can battle for everything. And so the winner will get some pity points. Uh, I mean, the, the loser will get some pity points, and the winner will take control. Um, and so you also have a grande meeple, which will count as two. And then if you include the expansion, you can have little modifiers, like a, a lightsaber will give you a plus one or like uh, all these different things. So it, there's a lot of fun things going on in this game. So if you like a little bit of random, du- you know, dice luck, um, I mean, I love that. So it's like, oh, I, I, I want to battle yeah. right now. I want to battle right now. <laughs> I love that. Fun, yeah, yeah I, I like the idea of having a way to kind of contest someone's uh, uh, claim to an area and stuff. I think that's really interesting and it fits well. And I love the expansion zone. It's fun with the modifiers, just yeah. adding more kind of fan service elements to the game. Um, I That sounds great, though. I yeah. mean, I, I, like that, yeah. that seems like a fantastic way to do Carcassonne while keeping it fairly, it seems like, accessible, right? Because the, the, having the match stuff still is in place. Um, I'm all in on this. I yeah. think that's great. That's yeah, great. it's yeah, really, that's... really great. I think you have to import it, though, because they, they have, like, the license in Europe, but it's not, like, available. Oh, oh is that right? I was going to say, I don't think it's very widely available. Okay, yeah. that, that would make Makes more sense. sense. Yeah, licensing and stuff is so it's odd tricky. With that. Yeah. Yeah. It's tricky with intellectual properties, as, we, as we'll yeah. find out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's super cool, though. So I definitely recommend it. It didn't work for all the people I introduced, but some people just don't really like that fighting mechanic where you're building up something and then, then you just lose it in like a... Psh- but yeah, I think sure, sure. You just have to take it lightheartedly. So you gotta yeah. you gotta be into it for what it is, right? right. You know, it's like this is what, why Carcassonne we're playing this version. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that's Star Wars, uh, Carcassonne Star Wars, uh, our number seven. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number six. Your number six is eighty one overall, and we actually Steph actually mentioned it earlier with uh, with uh, Warehouse thirteen, and this is Battlestar Galactica, Ooh, yeah. BSG. the game BSG, like the hidden trader game. The yeah, big, like this the is the big. the hidden trader game. People love big, long, heavy, uh, heavier um, hidden trader game. We've never played. I don't have too much interest. In Steph, personally. you haven't played as well, right? I don't believe yeah, any of us have played. I have it. not played. Um, yeah. So, I think but none one of us day. are in a rush. Yeah. Someday. See, Someday. IP, I've never watched Battlestar Galactica. Um, I know the Klingons are like a thing. And so, like, um, so I've never watched that. The IP doesn't get me in. Um, and so, like, Data's not in it. So, like, what, what's the point? So, like, um, the, the, where I'm just is making everyone Han? Mad today. Where's Han at? Where is Han? No, so like, the IP doesn't give me anything. And then Hidden Trader games are very, they need, Hidden Trader games need to be quick for me. Like, I just don't love, like, long Hidden Trader games. It's kind of stressful. They're stressful. But um, one of our good friends, this is her favorite game. So I do want to yeah. play it at least once with her yeah. because just because I think that's who I'd want to play it the with. The experience would be would be great. Even if the game isn't your favorite, the experience will be absolutely well worth it. Yeah. And yeah, so 100%. Would I, do you want to play it, um, Steph, even like once? Oh, I'm sure I will eventually. But um, yeah, it's not like not high seeking it out. on my to-do list. Yeah. That's yeah. Fair. Waiting that's for the fair. right time. I have I more yeah. farming games to play first. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Obviously. Instantly, always. But you know right? what? It uh, is super, super out of print, hard to find. So yeah. if you're looking for a replacement or another option, you can check out Warehouse. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Warehouse 13. Get ready. More condensed, put together nicely. But uh, Battlestar Galacta is, is yeah. you'll see that at conventions being played. Uh, you know, over, yeah. uh, it's it's just a great one for that kind of setting. Yeah, I feel yeah like if you love that group, if you like that kind of game, check yeah. out Battlestar Galactica. It's widely considered one of the best. Yeah, yeah. that's why it's 81 overall. Pretty yeah. well liked. Yeah. Uh, that's BSG at number six, six for Board Game Geek. Let's go ahead and jump into our number six. Our number six is 180 overall called Marvel Legendary. So we kind of talked about this a little bit, um, but this oh, is really? obviously yeah. the Marvel characters. <laughs> I know. It's it's great. This was one that for us, Steph, was like, this was the first, and, and to this point, kind of 
one of the only games that we like invested in because there's yeah. so many expansions. There's so many different characters. Like you're, you're dealing with Marvel. There's a bajillion characters, <laughs> yeah. both good and bad. So we have like, I think over a hundred. We have over a hundred. We stopped now collecting years ago. A long ago. time ago. Yeah, and we yeah. still have over a hundred. But this yeah. is the first one that we like made a custom box for it because we had so much stuff and, and got sucked in. And it's just a great deck building game where you'll assemble uh, usually five different heroes, and they can be whoever. So you might have Wolverine and Doctor Strange. And Wolverine again. And a different version of Wolverine <laughs> and Storm. And uh, if you're playing with Thanos, one of the things is Thanos somehow. And then you mix them all together to create this giant deck. And then you have these cards that will have all sorts of different abilities. Yep. They'll allow you to ultimately attack uh, villains who are entering the city. You'll be going up against a mastermind like Loki or Magneto or whoever it might be. Uh, and facing them down, you have to try to kind of bash them up. So yeah. it's just fun to kind of revel in like superheroes yeah. and making these kind of cool, uh, this kind of cool blends of all the, it kind of feels like them all teaming up to yeah. fight, which and is cool. Is You're still, not getting to this day is our most played game. We've played this game <laughs> no, more than so any times. other game, which is pretty wild. But yeah. Um, but yeah, we love Marvel Legend. I know you said you think Encounters is uh, a better system overall, Steph, but do you like just the normal well, kind of so, Legendary system? So I, I liked Marvel Legendary just fine. I, I just, I kind of wish that I could just play as Captain America. <laughs> like Okay, sure. So that's sure. kind of where it loses me a little bit, um, where you're just kind of collecting all these cards where, you know, it might be Iron Man and Captain America in my deck where, versus, you know, just having my... Captain America deck or something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that, kind of, so that's uh, kind of I, I enjoyed the game, sure. Um, you know what's funny is that I feel like every time I turn on Twitch, there's always like a gamer playing this game. Like this is like a hot game. <laughs> yeah. It never died because they keep making expansions for it. I know. So, like, <laughs> yeah. I think it's kind of like an evergreen to a degree because there's always new stuff or, but you're right. It is, it is. It's almost it's got like staying power, yeah. Con yeah, confusingly so played because it's not brand new. Um, but it is quite popular. It's been one for us was, We've played so many times throughout the years, uh, so it had to be on the list, and that's our number six. Yeah, for sure. It's Marble Legendary. Let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number five. All right, we're in the top 50, number 46 overall, and it's your number five is Star Wars Imperial Assault. So we got Boom. another Star Wars game here. Star Wars, obviously, is a very popular Quite popular. <laughs> so Star Wars Imperial Assault is a Descent Second Edition with the Star Wars kind of... Which I did not know until five minutes ago. Yeah, that's true. You thought it was like an X-Wing game, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just assumed. Yeah. I guess I've never looked at it. We haven't played Imperial Assault. I've always wanted to because it's a big dungeon crawl, kind of one versus all. Although I think with one of the expansions like that, you can play co-op or something. I'm not, I haven't played it yet. But, um, and I'm not sure how different it is from Descent. I know it's based off of Descent. And so it's the same kind of yeah. system. Have you played, Steph, this or have you played Descent? Um, nope, not yet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would like to. I know our good friend Paula, she has it, and I would like to play uh, with her because I know she likes it. Yeah, 100%. Um, but yeah, so this is a game I've on This is a game I've actually always wanted to try, but it's a, it's, there's a lot of minis, there's a billion expansions, it's Fantasy Flight, so they just support it like crazy. And so it's one of those things where this is also kind of like one of those lifestyle games where I'm like, I'm not going to get into this game. <laughs> it is a big investment, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. And so I'm just like, I'll just rather play with someone who already has it, or I want to really find out if I like love it before I would ever buy it, you know, kind of thing. So haven't had a chance to play it, really want to though. But if you like Descent, this is Descent with Star Wars. So and yeah, that sounds good to me. So that's Imperial Seems cool. Assault. Yeah. yeah. It's number five. Let us know what you think of Imperial Assault if you would recommend it in the comments. And in the meantime, we'll jump into our number five. Our number five is 291 overall, and that's Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. Oh my goodness. Boom. Love so you can it. choose popular games all the way up to 291. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're doing all right. That's so great. Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle is another deck building game that takes you through Harry Potter. So why do you like it, Steph? Oh, well, Harry Potter theme, obviously. Yeah. But um, I think it's a great cooperative deck building game. It's, um, you know, they, they, they liked it so much that they introduced the same kind of game, but with Toy Story theme, which is a little yeah. bit lighter, which is also fantastic. So I really like what they're doing here. I love the expansions, how it makes it a little bit more challenging to go through. Um, so nice. they did take it through the books. And I obviously, I, I love, love, love Harry Potter books. Well, so. one thing that we love about this game is like, this is this is such a smart decision on their part because they took a, 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 an IP that people are going to buy this game based off the IP alone. Of They're just yes. like, I love Harry Potter. It was a Harry Potter board game. I'm going to buy this for my kid. I'm going to buy this for my family. I'm going to buy this for my you know my friends or whatever. And then, but say you never play hobby board games. You're not used to like deck building. This game better like than any other game 
teaches you deck building because the first game, the first book you're playing through is very, very, very simple. And then every game they add a little bit more to by the end of it, you're just playing like a normal big deck builder, but the game literally teaches you the, the whole mechanic yeah. in slow steps. So if it is a situation where you bought it just because of the IP and you have no you idea what you're getting into, straight away, you, know? you won't get overwhelmed. I think it's absolutely brilliant the way they made this game. Yeah. yeah. And I like how, as you get into the deeper games that kind of go through each year, uh, your character cards upgrade and start getting powers, which like reflects like the characters growing with yeah. the, and their magic and everything. So it's very, there's like some things like, like it's very satisfyingly yeah. done. And it's a challenging one, especially with some of those expansion things, like you said, stuff. So um, it's just uh, fun. And yeah, it does a great, I think it was a great thing for the hobby to have that. And yeah. then now yeah. the Toy Story one, which I imagine does the same thing. Very popular uh, theme, uh, which can hopefully help create some board gamers. So yes, uh, that's pretty cool. So that's Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. So good. Our number <laughs> five, is it? Uh, let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number four. Okay, number four is 45 overall, uh, and this is Mechs vs. Minions. Right, which we didn't at first think of, I like, guess, an IP, but it's based in the League of Legends yeah, universe. Yeah, it's made true. by Riot Games, who makes League of Legends, yep. so it's it's in that, that whole world. And it world. is in that whole universe, and, and I, I, I know Steph plays League of Legends all the time, and so... All day, every day. Um, and she's so, playing right now. She's playing right now. as we're recording. Multitask. She's over here just like doing, <laughs> doing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how, what you stuff. do with League of Legends. I assume it's a lot of this. I have no idea what you're talking about. Moving the mouse, about. clicking keys. <laughs> I fundamentally don't know what League of Legends is. Same. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, it's set in that universe. So, and obviously, like, how'd they get the IP? Well, they, it was made by Riot Games, who makes League of Legends. So they were like, we're going to use our IP. own IP. <laughs> <laughs> this That's is theirs. <laughs> <laughs> but League of Legends is a, is a, a really fun game that uh, yeah. we like a lot where it's kind of a um, it's a cooperative programming game where you are um, you each have like a character and you have a little mech that you're on and you yep. have these different scenarios are going through kind of campaigny kind of legacy not really on the legacy part but you're opening up stuff as you go um, and you have different scenarios and basically the scenario you have to um, program your movements so you're putting out these cards in your program that will help you, that will move you, turn you, have you shoot, do all sorts of stuff. And there's like these hordes of minions coming, hence mechs versus minions. And you're working together to try to program your stuff in a way to fulfill whatever kind of scenario you're goal, trying to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just really, really fun. I really like cool. I don't like programming games very much when they're competitive because I just, I end up getting very frustrated a lot of times, but I really, really like programming when it's cooperative. Because yeah. then you're like actively trying to stay out of each other's way, or maybe you do want to like bump each other because it actually helps you, you know. So like this quirky circuits, like I really like cooperative programming games. Um, and Steph, what do you think? Have you played Max vs. Minions? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've played uh, several levels, but I haven't finished it yet. I definitely want Where's to. You haven't either. Um, <laughs> but you know, you say you like the cooperative programming. It's, it is awesome. But then you added in that like time mechanic because there is a time yes. mechanic. So you're like stressed out. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you have like, I think it's maybe 30 seconds <laughs> to, to like get your program built. To like draft these cards, built. right? And yeah. And you're like, yeah. okay, where do I put them? And like, so I, yeah. I think it I think it works really well. Obviously, the production quality is a f top notch. <laughs> the best ever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like. It's bonkers. It's, it's nice when you have a multi-billion dollar company making a board game. And they're like, <laughs> profit margin? Yeah. We, Whatever. There are 100 million people play League of Legends. We don't care about Our the profit margin. Our life is profit game. margins. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, let's go. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's a great product, and it's the the. I think you're right. The cooperative programming becomes very interesting. So then, when you mess, you know, stuff gets messed up. It's yep. just the game is messing with you. You're not messing with each other. Yeah. Uh, and it does get it does get wacky with that timed element, like Steph said. It, it gets it's really fun. You just like put stuff down, and you're like, this is not a good thing. And then you just <laughs> end up all turned around and backward. Um, but it's a really cool game. So check out Max versus Minions. That is uh, what is the number forty five from BG. number forty five oh, yeah. from BG no, no, number four, four overall, on I'm our sorry. list. 45 overall, so let's get into our number four. All right, our number four it comes in at 1318, and that is Unmatched Jurassic Park. Nice. Right. Yeah. So Unmatched does uh, uh, some IP, some, stuff, IP yeah. some some public domain things, and this is one of the IP-based ones, so yeah. Jurassic Park. So uh, for folks that don't know Unmatched, you're, you're, you each get a character. That character will have a deck of cards that you will use to attack with and stuff, and they'll be within their thematic. So in Jurassic Park, you have... Uh, we have Muldoon, Muldoon. who's uh, kind of like the main Clever hunter, girl, uh, at a girl, uh, clever girl guy, and then uh, some in-gen workers, and then you have a pack, a trio of raptors. 
who are um, strong, which yeah. are strong. And so like, <laughs> this is why we liked it is because, uh, the way that this is something Unmatched does really well is whatever the character is, they do really good stuff with their cards that makes sense thematically for their yeah. character. The way they operate, the types of things they do. There's obviously something like Jurassic Park fan service with the names of the cards and everything. And then the Raptors are really rad because they are best when they work together, which makes sense of the way they describe the Raptors, how they hunt. They're kind of pack hunters. So it's always like if you're... Raptors are together and you kind of surround your opponents, you get stronger attacks. Mm -hmm. It is a really cool uh, job with yeah. with um, making the the kind of theme and the IP come alive. Yeah, and, and really any of the IP-based Unmatched could go into here. We chose Jurassic Park, but they have like Buffy, which is also really, really, really yeah, fun. Deadpool coming out, Marvel stuff Marvel coming out. Marvel stuff coming out. So Woo. yeah, really excited about the new Unmatched stuff in terms of, uh, especially the IP stuff. But it's like, yeah, it's just, the system is super simple. It takes like five minutes to learn the game. It's really, really simple. The games are like 20 minutes, so you can like play and then switch up the characters, play again, switch up the characters. And so it's just, yeah, it's just, it's real fun. A match is great. Yeah. yeah. Have you tried it, stuff? I can't remember. I've played a bunch of the, a bunch of them. I just recently learned Cobble and Fog, which I love because I love Jekyll and Hyde. But, um, yeah, Cobble and Fog is probably my favorite of the domain. sets. <laughs> so yeah, good. that's public domain. I know. Yeah, that so. would have been like my pick if we had them. It was yeah. like, well, they're kind of just free to use. So they're not property of anyone's intellect. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, so, so yeah, so the I, system I love works. the system that they created here. I think it works really well. It kind of reminds me of like games like Funkoverse mm -hmm. or yep. um, Disney Villainous, where you yeah. can just mix and match the characters and yep. fight and play. So yeah. I, I really like what they've done here. Um, so I'm excited. Yeah. I should try this one because I love Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're cool. Both characters are really interesting. The Raptors in particular are just like fun. Like it's yeah. just cool to, to be these But three. yeah, it's like molding your set now. That's what I love about a match. Every character is so different and it's yeah. so specific to their, it's just, it's really good. Yeah. It's really cool. So uh, <laughs> check it out. That's our pick is, is uh, unmatched Jurassic Park, but really unmatched in Whatever general, are, whether yeah. it's again, public domain or IP based stuff. The whole system is fantastic. So sort of take your pick. If you think a character is interesting, play that set. It's going to be great. It's going to work with everything else. It's all good. Yeah. So that's our number uh, four. four nice. is unmatched. Let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number three. All right. Your number three is 45, 43 overall, rather. And that is Marvel Champions. Marvel Champion. Champion. I have not played this game. I know people love it. It's you really played good. this game. It's really good. And you, Mike, you're like, Steph, have you played Marvel Champions? I have. You I was like going to ask if you like this, because you were talking about when we were talking about Legendary, how you'd rather just play a character. So That's with Marvel true. Champions, you get that opportunity to That's choose true. a character. So is that more to your liking, would you say? Uh, yeah. I would definitely say I liked uh, Marvel Champions more than Marvel uh, Legendary. Uh, but however, I think it probably works better with fewer people. And I played with a full four-player count, so it was... Mm. kind of long for my taste but overall i thought it was a pretty good co-op i know people are like crazy about it so yeah, oh, yeah. we have we have some champions. we have some people with some friends and stuff who are they have it all Gun, and oh. they're super excited <laughs> and they follow because they do all these, they they do all these like teasers for for packs and characters that are coming up and so it becomes this kind of riddle people trying to figure out what's coming and um i've only ever played it at two player and i imagine two player or even solo would be quite good yeah. but i think i think i don't know if i'd want to play the full four players. So right. From what I've heard, I wouldn't. Yeah, I'd yeah. want to play two. Yeah. But so it's a fantastic I would probably game. like it better with two, as you said. So Yeah, yeah. It's it's really cool, though. I mean, I love the idea. So you're playing a character, and they have, of course, their alter ego when they're not doing superhero stuff. And you can flip between the two. And when you flip and you're kind of your alter ego, you have a chance to recover uh, and, and do something. And then you can flip to your hero side, and then you can attack. You're fighting a villain, uh, and you can do all your kind of attack stuff. So there's this kind of fun balance of, like, when to be in superhero mode, when to kind of rest so you don't get knocked out. And yeah. uh, and then each character feels, uh, the way they work is very, again, thematic to themselves. Uh, if you're Iron Man, you have to assemble your suit, you know, and do things like that. So yeah. it's very cool. Like each character comes out. It's fun to kind of explore, like, how they're going to make that character work with these cards and stuff. Um, so it's kind of like endless room to explore for the for Fantasy Flight to yeah. just make... <laughs> any set about anybody you'll you'll never run that well dry so uh marvel champions is quite popular as a result it's number yeah. three 43 overall done quick work for that all right. uh, so let's go ahead and jump into our number three our number three is 177 overall called horrified horrified you know, so this, this is horrified we were kind of we like okay this is like that on the line we're kind of on the line here because 
all these villains. So Horror Fight is a cooperative game where you're going against like old Universal movie monsters. Huge Creature of the Black Lagoon, Dracula, Frankenstein. Frankenstein and the so all of those are in the public domain, but this game is based off specifically the Universal like the universal movie monsters Which so we're I like i have think this right is an ip those portrayals yeah because it's, it literally says like universal on the box so yeah. i think it's an ip we're kind of like i'm actually not entirely sure if this one no, no, let us know in the comments so it's just this seems, seems like an intellectual but property nonetheless, gray the game is area. great <laughs> yeah but this is based off of universal's movie monsters and it's a a kind of a pick up and deliver game really yeah, a ultimately. cooperative game where you're going around with your character to different locations to pick up different items. And these items will be based on, they'll have three colors. They'll be uh, red, blue, and yellow. Uh, and then you're gonna be choosing usually two or three of the movie monsters. You might be against uh, the uh, Invisible Man, Wolfman, and the Mummy. Yeah. Uh, and they each have a different kind of uh, thing that they do in a way that they get defeated. Yeah. So you always have kind of two parts to defeating them. You have to kind of uh, do some tasks, like with the Mummy, you have to move these little scarabs around and kind of work out this little puzzle. Uh, if you're the Wolfman, you have to discover the cure for the Wolfman, and then you have to go and confront uh, the the monsters themselves. And so it's a fun game of kind of moving around, and it's very accessible and light. So yeah. it's a co-op cooperative game, so you can openly talk about your turns. You have a little bit of a player power, but it's very simple. Um, and each villain is kind of an interesting little puzzle mm -hmm. to to overcome. Yeah. Uh, have you played? Uh, oh yeah. Horrified stuff. Yeah. I re I really really like this. I think. Right. Um, it's a perfect Halloween game, if you will. Yeah. But oh, it's, oh, it's yeah, good oh, really yeah. at any time. Uh, so la a couple years ago, whenever, before COVID, Halloween time, whatever, I, I went around and Walgreens was having these like sales. So they had all these, you know, those like boxes that you will get a figure in and you uh -huh. don't know what you're going to get. They're like, yeah, 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 figure. yeah. And they had all the Universal Monsters in a set. And I'm like, I'm going to every Walgreens and taking all these boxes. <laughs> and I, I managed to find the full set. So I have a fully mini Funko like character upgrade. That is so cool. Uh, That's legit. Set of a uh, horrified. So it's pretty epic. So if you see pictures, I'm, I'm probably going to supply some pictures. Oh, that heck yeah. Cool. We're going to show this off. Oh, uh, so awesome. it, I went all out and they're all black and white figures like because the old classic yeah, yeah, Universal yeah. figures. And they're so cool. I, and oh, um, that's a, it just, you know, it, it's, it doesn't make the game better, but it does in a way. But yeah, so, totally. so it's, it's such a great cooperative experience and I really love what they've done with this game. So hopefully we yeah. see more universal monsters or, you know, yeah, another I expansion I would love or something. I would love an expansion. Yes. I would love that. Yeah. It's a charming game. When I played it, I was like, Wow, this is... I wasn't really expecting much, honestly. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. It's actually engaging gameplay. The, the the way that each of the monsters work is interesting and different. Thematic, you can change yeah. the difficulty by how many uh, monsters you play against. Yeah. So, it's, again, there's an accessibility level there. And I'm really jealous of your upgrade stuff. That seems super cool. <laughs> I really want that. <laughs> uh, but Horrified is just a fun time. Yeah. And that's why it's, it's our number three. Yeah. It's... Um, it was kind of just shocking. I was like, wow. This is really fun. That was great. Yeah. yeah our sister <laughs> bought it for us and we played it. And I was just like, I did not expect that level of a game. Yeah. Um, Again, talking about like kind of mass market target stuff. It's, it's they're great, great nowadays. It's, it's like, great. they're all great. Like, yeah. 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 It's really, really, really fascinating. So that's our number three. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number two. All right, so this is our our first and I think only a double crossover. Oh so God. we have a crossover at number two, and this is 13 overall. Ooh, 13 <laughs> overall in uh, uh, from BG, and that is War of the Ring, second edition specifically. War of the Ring these days, um, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, I don't think anyone plays first edition anymore, but War of the Ring, second edition. Lord of the Rings, you Lord know. It's in a box, right? I mean, it's... <laughs> and I was talking about this in a, in a video on our channel recently where it's like, I don't think I would like this game if it wasn't Lord of the Rings themed because it's it's essentially ultimately just a war game. Yeah. And I don't really like war games. I don't have much interest in them. But the, the theming in this game is so strong it's and so, so strong. good <laughs> that it makes me absolutely love it despite the fact that it's a game that I don't generally love. But like... That's pretty powerful. We all... You love it. <laughs> we love it. Steph, you love it. Yes, I love War of the Ring. Um, I've only played it a few times. It's one of those games where you, it kind of like gets put on the shelf because it is a long experience. It's big. But, oh, um, yeah. And you have to kind of relearn it every time you go back in. <laughs> a so little bit, I need bit, to play yeah. it more so I remember the rules going in. Uh, but I really, really love the theme. Obviously, uh, Lord of the Rings is just amazing. And it's then, the you know, playing the good guys obviously is great because one person <laughs> can go like invisible mode and you're just trying to get that ring up and to throw it so in. So epic. And so it's just like, 
Ah, oh, man, it's so good. It's so yeah. good. It's, it's so fantastic. Good. It really is. Uh, it's just, uh, there's so much detail, like in all the cards, you're playing a lot of these, it's kind of a oh, yeah. card driven game in a lot of ways. And you're playing these cards and so many of them are specific references to the books and then the, <laughs> what you're doing, the character, what it allows characters to do. Uh, it's just, it's very satisfying. Yeah. You know, it's a good game regardless, but if you like Lord of the Rings, it will Oof. satisfy. Yeah. Uh, which it clearly has. That's why so many people love it. Yeah. And yeah, it's a big, and in all of the, uh, the Amigo households, it's, uh, quite popular. <sighs> yeah. Yes, but it's a big one. It's not one you're going to play every day, no. but it is great when you do. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, so that's, out. yeah, it's everyone's number two though. Uh, yeah, 13 overall. We have number one to get to though. So let's jump into Board Game Geeks first. So a lot of people call War of the Ring, Lord of the Rings in a box. Now this game is widely considered Star Wars in a box. It's number nine overall, and that is Star Wars Rebellion. Very popular. This is a big two-player game, kind of like War of the Ring, big two-player game. One side's the Rebel Alliance, the other side's the Empire. The Empire is trying to find where like the Rebel base is on one of the different planets. And um, haven't played this game. I, this is a win game. Like I don't. This is. I don't think I'd want. I'd never need to own this game. I don't think I'd want to play it very often. But I think once every few really, years, yeah. I would really like to play this game. I, I really, really like want to try it. try it. Have you played Star Wars Rebellion, Steph? I have. Yeah. I think. Okay. Uh, I, I totally get why people like it. Um, uh, for me, if I'm going to play a big game like this, uh, I, I would rather play War of the Ring. Um, yeah. But I get it. Like you know, one. When I played it, I'm like, I didn't really know what I was doing, which is obviously <laughs> going to happen. But right, I was like yeah. trying to like find, you know, the rebels and stuff. And so I like that they're hidden and you're trying to like manipulate the board to control the different, you know, planets and stuff. So um, it's just, you know, it's it's a lot. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so it's not hurt. It's I, I'm not sure I would like gravitate towards that one, but I get why people like it. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, I mean that's that's a really cool thing. Is like it could be maybe not for you. Maybe the IP doesn't draw you in enough, or it's big and complicated. But for a lot of people, it's Star Wars in a box, and it really satisfies on that level, like War of the Ring does for us. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah exactly. it's just one that like I want to try because like I do love Star Wars. So yeah. I imagine if I had someone you know that could bring me in and really help break it down so I could understand the game, I think I would I would quite enjoy it. But uh, it's about finding that person to to have that experience with. So someday it'll happen. Yeah. Uh, but it's number nine overall. Obviously, very well-loved game. Uh, it's number one of the IP-based games. It's the first one that'll appear as you scroll down the list yeah, of it's overall in the top board 10, games. So it's a, yeah, it's, it's right there. It's, doing so <laughs> it's done okay for itself. But we have a number one that has been mentioned before. So let's talk about it. Our number one comes in at 88, and that is, of course, Lord of the Rings Journey in Middle-Earth. Get wrecked. Again, <laughs> if we ever needed any clear indicator about the IP that is the best suited for us, it is Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Journey to Middle-Earth is our number one. Uh, Steph, you teased it a little bit, but talk a little bit more about what you've enjoyed while playing Journey to Middle-Earth. So the first thing that, so you mentioned that it kind of reminds you of um, Mansions of Madness. Okay, yeah. so it, it does. It has the app driven, which I love that. I love that you don't know right. how the really world well expl uh, ex expands. You just kind of explore what's going on. Then you'll eventually see the map for the, the level you're playing. But what I really love is that they take away like the dice and use cards for your they're, yeah. You're using cards to push your luck. You're like, okay, well, if I'm revealing three cards, how many successes will I get? And yep. and so you're you're trying to do this with the cards that you have. And so it, it is sort of a deck builder. You're trying to increase your deck bit. as the game yeah. goes on. It's like so you're not gonna like find a whole lot of cards uh, very fast. But as the game scenario campaign moves on and on and on you um, up you're and... gonna get extra cards added to your deck which will help you get more successes and you're shot at getting what you need right. um, but i love that you're leveling up your character finding new like like armor or weapons or whatever so i love that um and it's just you know obviously lord of the rings <laughs> yeah i love i love <sighs> It just the word always comes to mind when when we play is it. like it's dynamic because mm -hmm. it it is generating. You even even play the first we play um, a bunch of first times. level of a campaign and it won't be identical every time. It, won't be it will be similar. It's so good. Yeah, yeah, but it's like you could play that infinitely because it'll just generate stuff and there's story elements where I like it. It might present you with a 
uh, you meet this person and, and you have three options of how you greet them. You, you be friendly, you be a little neutral, you be standoffish, and that will change the game. Yeah. The game will change on a dime based yeah. off of that. And it's I'm like, so that is good. so, that's one of the things where I'm like, games like this, you start to see that when you introduce some technology, like the things that now become available oh, are limitless. Yeah. And it's fantastic. Like you said, Seth, the ability to kind of level up, get armor, find items and stuff that you now carry through with you. It tracks your XP over time as characters come in and out of the story. Um, there's some levels that you do that are, are much more kind of exploration based. Mm -hmm. And there's other ones that are much more like combat based, but it's not just the same thing every time. Yeah. Um, every time you play it, I'm just like, this is so cool yeah it's just really neat yeah. <laughs> uh and it's obviously based you get to play as aragorn or gimli and these characters that we love uh from the books and yeah. beyond yeah. Uh, they even expand uh the kind of uh actual books to yeah, yeah. include more characters that are like really rad so yeah. anyway it's we great. are fans of it that's what we're saying <laughs> is that what we're saying oh that's what yeah, we're saying yeah. we're a fan i'm gonna <laughs> hot take we like this game <laughs> we like get rich we're gonna be bold we're gonna say it <laughs> Uh, no, it's really great. It's really fantastic. It's our number one uh, Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. And that is our list. 10 versus 10. Boom. 10 versus 10. You know, there's yeah. some definitely, uh, we we agreed on certain, certain, certain stuff, things yeah. in this list. Uh, but again, there's more and more cool IP games coming out, you know, and, the and they just, I mean, especially like something on Kickstarter, there's a lot of like video games like Bloodborne. There's like a Witcher game coming out. There's a ton of these kinds of, of games. And, like, I'm glad that they're good nowadays, you know? Because yeah. it used to be kind of a death sentence for a game. Being like, oh, yeah. there's an IP? Well, that's going to be bad. <laughs> you know? And it's like, that's not the case anymore. And that's that's really, really cool. So down in the comments, let us know what are your favorite IP-based games. Yeah. Were they mentioned on either of our lists? Was it something completely different? Is it keeping it sexy? Because it should be. It should be. Wow. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about be. that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? Um, Kenny G signed off. Everything's fine. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the game before here. Yeah, so. it's great. And so, um, <laughs> nonetheless, but that is our list. Uh, yeah, let us know down in the comments also what kind of list you want to see us cover Please. next and yeah this is awesome yeah thanks so much steph thank you for uh joining us as always and yeah. making uh the three amigos what we are it's nothing if not for steph because steph plays all the games all the games uh, true. <laughs> and you can check out steph and us on twitch playing all the games so check all that out yeah uh, and be sure to check out other things right here at board game Geek. yeah all right folks we'll yeah. see you in the next one bye everybody bye bye